that. Right, for those of you that potentially are new, because I know I spoke to a few people yesterday, if you are wondering how to comment, let's quickly show you once more. Good morning, Carl. I'm well, thank you. Um, hope you are too. And good morning, John Paul, as well. Right, so to comment, you should be able to go to Year 5 Virtual School, which is where you would have signed in. You'll see that it's looking pretty jazzy with myself, Miss Purcell, and Miss Tilly there. Um, but just here is the comment here button. When you click on that, it brings up a sheet for you. You pop your name, the mind from F, your comment, blue, and then you submit, and that comes directly through to myself during the lesson. Okay, so that's how you make sure you're commenting the answers. Right, that brings us on to lesson seven. Oh, good morning, Kobe and Cody. Both of you came in at the same time. How hilarious, fleshes. Um, oh, yes. What am I doing? Thank you, Maisie. It is the 12th. I don't know why that says that. There we go. Oh, 21st now, apparently. There we go. <laughs> right. Good morning, Sky. Woo! Go, Sky. Right, superstars. Okay, so welcome to lesson seven. Now, I shan't lie. I think this is going to be a slightly challenging lesson, but you can always prove me wrong, can't you? So let's see how we get on. Um, here we've got the listening button, as always. Let me get my pointer here, the listening. So once you see that on the slide, it means listen carefully. New content is coming your way. If you listen well, it will help you when you get to this part here, which is where you need to comment. OK, and then again, you also know how to submit your answers to me on that virtual school page. Lovely. Now, we still do have our lockdown leaderboard. Now, we did have five VPs smash it last lesson and they had one. So it's again, seeing who can come in the first five to comment with the correct answer. Gets points for your class. So not only do you have individual victory, but class victory too. So let's see if 5CF today can even the scores or if 5BP will extend their lead. I mean, I feel like I know what's going to happen, but I'm going to be optimistic. If Amy E has anything to do with it, she's going to try to extend that lead. But I think Summer might give her a bit of a challenge throughout this lesson. Let's see. So... Today's um, learning outcome. So again, two parts. Grammar is the main focus today. Slight bit of reading, which was merged into the grammar. There's not a separate reading as we usually do today. So I'll have to make reading a bit more heavy in another lesson. We're going to revise inverted commas, which is what we did last lesson. And then we're going to explore with similes and metaphors. So fingers crossed that all goes well today. So, punctuating speech correctly. So, I've got two sentences below. Neither one are punctuated correctly. There are no inverted commas. There are no speech marks. There's no full stops. There's some degree of capitalization, which is a success, but not all the capitalization that we need. So, remember, when we're punctuating speech, we need inverted comma, capital letter, end punctuation, inverted comma. Okay? Now, those are missing. So let's see who are the first five to punctuate these sentences correctly. Off you go.
Okay, I've got one point coming through five BP. Think I've got someone that's capitalized teacher. Does it need it? I've got someone else that is forgetting that there needs to be a capital letter at the start of speech. Ooh. Think again, does the end punctuation go inside the inverted commas or outside? Two points for five BP. One point five CF. That's the first three. So it's nearly sixty-six or ninety-nine. Just the inverted commas. Good morning, Akmal. Oh. So close. Think about where that full stop should go. Quickly do it again. Get another point for five CF. <laughs> Good morning, Solomon. Solomon, we're just punctuating this speech. Quickly get a point. So so far, I've got Isla bringing the point for five BP. Amy, you're so close, my lovely. All your punctuation is correct. You've just missed capital letters. Send me through one sentence again. Thinking about the capital letters, and then you can get a point for your class. Cole, so close, but your full stop at the end wasn't quite placed right. Declan, good, but you missed out end punctuation, and you missed out the capital letter at the start of speech. Femi, you brought in the second point for five BP. Well done. Summer, you brought in the first point for 5CF with your hello sentence. That was wonderful. Anyway, I see no speech marks, lovely. Well, let's see. We've got some more coming through now. All oh, again, carriage. Where does that full stop go? Good. Summer, second point for 5CF. Carl brought in the fifth point there. Well done, Carl. Lovely. Right. Well done. Loads of comments. I do feel like we don't know where the inverted commas are, however, because we've seen 66s and 99s. <laughs> well, they might be on both of my laptops. The inverted commas are where the number two is. So if you click shift and the number two, you should get an inverted comma come up, okay? For anyone that's struggling to locate that. Right, let's have a little look. So let's add up the points. We have five VP starting off with three from that first task and five CF with two. So keeping it tight. Some are brought in both of those, five CF. Come on, get some more members. But that was a nice mix there in five VP of Isla, Demi and Cole. Well done, guys. Superstars. Right, let's have a look then. So here you needed the comma to introduce the speech, which actually many of you remember. So I was really impressed with that because that was one of the punctuation that was missing last time. So superstars. Then you have the inverted comma. A couple of you missed this capital letter here. Then because it was the end of the sentence, it was a full stop that was necessary. A couple of you put a comma and then you have the inverted comma. Remember, the end punctuation goes inside the inverted comma when we're dealing with speech. OK, let's see the next sentence. So we had hello, inverted comma, comma, inverted comma, smile, Daniel, full stop, inverted comma, capital letter. How are you today? Question mark and then inverted comma. So well done. Quite a few of you actually did really well at knowing that this speech and this speech needed to be separated, but it's fine for them to stay on the same line because it's not a new speaker, it's the same person that was speaking. So good job. I'm impressed. Some other little messages come through as well. Well done, everybody. Right, let's move on. <laughs> so we're going to look at similes and metaphors today. So I've got a little video for you from Flocabulary. 
let me just do my little speaker trick to sort that out for you. Now listen to it carefully, it's really good. It's got loads of information, so you have to listen carefully to it. Christina was walking home by herself after babysitting. The night was dark. She walked by a cornfield. The crickets made sounds. Eyes glowed from the cornstalks. What? This sounds like a good story. Yeah? I'm gonna let you finish. Okay. But these lines are boring. Really? They're not vivid enough. Huh. We need to make this come to life with some similes and metaphors. Okay. Got a story laying flat on the page. Uh. Wanted to come to life like a play on the stage. Right. Describe using metaphors and similes. Writing vivid stories will be a breeze. A similes, a figure of speech. Using like or as to compare different things. A metaphor compares things to without like or as don't get them confused now let's rewrite that story from before but this time let's use similes and metaphors take this line the night was dark that's written simply without much spark let's add a metaphor I'm on this. The night was a cave of darkness. Now the night isn't actually a cave, but that line is more vivid on the page. It's a metaphor I didn't use like or as. Now let's add a simile, lightning fast. The crickets made sounds. That line is really boring. How about the crickets were like an eerie symphony? See the word like? like? That's a simile. They don't have to make your lines frightening, but they'll improve your writing. That is lightning. Uh, Compare things with a metaphor. Metaphors are a home run, yeah, for sure. Use like or as for a simile. That definition's like glass. It's clear to me. Come on. Compare things with a metaphor. Uh, metaphors are a home run, yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. Use like or as for a simile. That definition's like glass. It's clear to me. These tools might seem easy to swallow, but there are some rules you need to follow. Compare so your readers will understand. Get it together like a rubber band. Uh -huh. For instance, here's a simile not to use. The eyes glowed like my sister's shoes. Uh -huh. That doesn't work. We don't know what they look like. So that simile has got to take a high go and make sure it matches the story's tone or else it won't work like a broken phone our story is scary so our similes should match silly similes might make the reader laugh like the cricket sounded like a monkey doing math um that's random similes and metaphors of puppies and cats people love them how many did you catch in this rap compare things with a metaphor metaphors are a home run yeah for sure Use like or as for a simile. That definition's like glass. It's clear to me. Compare things with a metaphor. Metaphors are a home run, yeah, for sure. Use like or as for a simile. That definition's like glass. It's clear to me. Okay. Hopefully you've picked up some really good information from that. So let's have a little look. So similes and metaphors are forms of what we call figurative language. Now there are multiple forms of figurative language and we're going to look at another form next lesson. But these are two that we're really going to home in on today. When a writer uses figurative language, the whole reason is that they want to appeal to the reader's senses, appeal to their imagination, and they want to appeal to their sense of humour. So figurative language can be funny, it can paint a picture in your mind, and it can enlighten your, sentence, uh, your senses by what you might see, what you might think you would feel at that time, what you might imagine you'd smell at that time. So it's a really good tool to use to improve your writing for the benefit of the reader. Both similes and metaphors compare one thing to another. So it's all about that comparison. However, they do it slightly differently. A simile compares using two things such as like and as. 
whereas a metaphor compares, but it does not use the words like or as. So you've really got to remember it. Um, again, like I said, they both improve stories and poems by making the writing more vivid. Again, painting that clear image in the reader's mind. And they're used really effectively for descriptive writing. So it's not really a tool that we'd see in a non-fiction piece. It is very much a tool that we'd see in a narrative. So, metaphors are phrases or expressions which compare two unlike things with one another. Metaphors usually contain words like be, was, were, are, and is. For example, the falling snowflakes are dancers fluttering in the air. Now, that sentence is comparing snowflakes to dancers, giving the image in the reader's minds that as these snowflakes fall, they're not just descending straight and then landing on the ground. They're twirling around and dancing beautifully in the wind. It gives that idea of a very peaceful yet beautiful scenery of snow falling, which is really enlightening for the reader and makes it a bit more interesting when reading. Um, however, if I wanted to change the sentence from a metaphor saying that it is something to a simile saying it's like something, I can just add in that word. So snow, the falling snowflakes are like dancers fluttering in the air. Now, a metaphor has a stronger comparison because it's saying it is something else, whereas a, meta, uh, whereas a simile is saying it is like something else. So if you want to go for that stronger comparison, use a metaphor. If you just want to make a somewhat link, use a simile. Okay, we'll explore this more and make more sense as we go on. So metaphors should be clear for the reader by comparing two things which have some sort of link. For example, the snow is a pillow. That doesn't make as much sense because the reader can't really picture this snow pillow. It looks like just a very short space of snow that's a, maybe a little mountain, but we don't really tend to see that when snow, when snow falls, do we? However, the snow is a soft white blanket over the hills. Makes more sense because the reader can think of a thick blanket that's covering the land and it's lovely, beautiful and white. And it's like a little, it's like the layer of lads is being hugged by the white snow. Okay. So that one's better. And we know it's a metaphor because it's used the word is. It said it is. If it was a simile, it would have used like or as. Okay. So here are some example metaphors. And your task is to tell me what is being compared in these sentences. So here I have, she is sunshine brightening our day. What two things have been compared there? Then I've got here, a blank page is a playground for imagination. What two things are being compared there? Cotton candy words did not appeal to her taste. Again, what two things are being compared there? So I just need two words for each sentence. What two things are being compared to each other? Again, fast is five. Lockdown leaders, let's go.
Oh gosh, sorry, I'm catching up. We had a bit of an issue with the comments. <laughs> right. Good morning, Lexi. What's going on with the comments today? So I apologise if I've missed anyone. Um, good effort, Zach. Not quite, just so close. Good, well done. Um, Karis, being the first point five for CF. Well done, Isla. First point for five BP. Not quite, Amy E. Have another look, my lovely. Well done, Summer. Second point for five CF. Good, Zach. Well done, Fatima. Well done, Lexi. Good. Right. Oh, we've even got the score there. Yay. <laughs> Love a competition. Right, so that brings us to 5CF with three people that time and 5BP with two people that time. 5-5, five, five, guys. Well done. Really, really well done at finding out. Good morning, Declan. Um, what was being compared there? Let's let's talk about it. So the first sentence said, "She is sunshine brightening our day." So it's comparing the girl with being like sunshine, which puts in the reader's mind that this person might be a happy, cheerful person that spreads happiness and positivity to people around her so she isn't actually sunshine but it's a metaphor because it's used the word is saying she is sunshine but we know that's impossible she can't actually be the sun shining can she but it's used to compare her personality to something bright positive bubbly um, which is a lovely metaphor to have um, and the next one which you all nailed which is amazing says a blank page is a playground for the imagination. So we're comparing a blank page as a playground where you can have fun, where you can mess about, where you can do different things. And so that, that's what you could do in the blank page. Don't see the blank page as something daunting. See it as somewhere where your imagination can have a whale of a time and do something incredible, which is what I actually see writing us. So that I love that metaphor. That's great. And then the last one, the is was omitted here. It wasn't actually used. But it is a metaphor because it's saying the words are like cotton candy. Now, again, that's putting in the reader's mind. Well, cotton candy is sweet. So it's saying sweet words, nice words, did not appeal to her taste, which means obviously this person must be a bit upset about something. And no amount of sweet words is going to appeal to her, is going to change her out of her bad mood. Whoever's upset her has done a very good job of it, okay? So they're all examples of metaphors. Well done for identifying the two comparisons there. Fabulous. Right, so we're going to explore metaphors again, looking at this um, song. I can't say I actually know who Lone Star are, but there's a song here, and it's got quite a few metaphors in it. So again, remember, a metaphor is when you say something is something that it's not, but you're using it as a comparison, okay, to put something in the reader's mind. So identify in this passage the metaphors. I put a hint, there are four of them. If you do find all four, consider why the singer put these metaphors in. What impact did they want it to have on the listener, okay? So I'll just read this through. I'm already there. Take a look around. I'm the sunshine in your hair. I'm the shadow on the ground. I'm the whisper in the wind. I'm your imaginary friend. And I know I'm in your prayers. Oh, I'm already there. OK, so what are the four metaphors you can find? Let's see who our fastest fingers are. Morning, Callum W. Sky, you're doing really well. Just looking back at previous comments. Well done for finding 
all the comparisons in the last task. Superstar. Oh, good fast fingers coming through here. So, Karis, first fast finger. Lexi, next. Oh, Aman. Hello. Good morning, Aman. So, Karis, one. One. Lexi, one. Cole, well done. Harris, well done. Well done, Isla. Well done, Summer, super. Good job, John Paul. Well done, Lexi. Lexi, you're doing so well, lovely. Good. Right, well done. Right, let's have a little look then. So these were the four that we were looking for. I'm the sunshine in your hair. So it's saying I am sunshine, which again, you know, is impossible. I'm the shadow on the ground. Again, it's saying I am the shadow. I'm the whisper in the wind. I'm your imaginary friend. So it's saying it's a lot of things. This person's a lot of things that they can't possibly be. But they're using metaphors to deliver a message. So what message? Let's have a look. So using the idea of I'm the sunshine in your hair, the singer wants the listener to feel bright and happy like sunshine in your lovely clean hair. Okay, a nice fresh feeling. That I'm the shadow. The singer wants the listener to know that they'll always be there, just like a shadow always follows you around. Well, this person's always going to be there. They're like attached, like a shadow is to you. I'm the whisper in the wind. The listener can hear the singer's voice everywhere. It's carried through nature, including the wind. And I'm your imaginary friend. A child's imaginary friend is obviously someone that is available to play with them, to comfort them, to share their secrets. So this is someone that the singer wants you to feel that you, they can be trusted, that you can confide in them, that they can be there in the up times and the down times, they can be supportive to you. So basically, in this passage here, by using metaphors, they're trying to say that in an array of ways, they're going to be your brightness, they're going to be there all the time, that you're going to be able to listen to them and hear them, and you're going to also be able to confide with them and play with them. So actually it sounds like a pretty decent being through using those metaphors, something that we'd all want in a good friend. So next challenge. Here's the second part of the song. Again, identify the metaphors in this passage, and I want you to try and have a go, just like how I identified here. What is it that the singer wants the listener to be thinking by the use of the metaphors in the next page. So again, it says, I'm already there. Don't make a sound. I'm the beat in your heart. I'm the moonlight shining down. I'm the whisper in the wind, and I'll be there until the end. If you can find one metaphor and explain why or what the singer wanted the listener to feel by using that metaphor. Good morning, Rihanna. I need to add to the leaderboard, don't I? I'll do that while she'll find to the next lot. So three points five BP, two points five CF lap round. 
five BP going to extend their lead or are five going to make a comeback? Who knows? Nice. Nice, Amy E. Bring in another point for five BP there. Good effort, Summer. Well done. Good, Karis. Well done. Two more. Who's going to be? Getting nervous. <laughs> it's literally so tight. Oh, new five BP members have just come through. Let's see what they said. Lexi, you've done a great job, but you have to explain why for one of them, lovely. Oh, that's lovely. I think it's Paul and Amy coming in with a second there. Lovely. Yeah. really lovely answers let me share with you what some people have said so i really like the idea here from amy e she's identified i'm the moonlight shining down which means the singer wants the listener to think that they'll shine down on you and watch over you that's lovely Ah, oh, that's lovely, John Paul. John Paul is identifying like the idea of the, the beat in your heart, the moonlight shining down, and the whisper in the wind, and that all of those have been used so that the person will never be on their own. That's lovely. So lovely. You guys can be so insightful sometimes. Now she's got the same idea. The idea of the whisper means that they'll always be with them. Lovely. Really, really well done. Good job. Right. Let's have a look then. So, absolutely. I didn't highlight this one here and the whisper in the wind because we did have it on the previous one. So I was looking for you to identify the two newer ones. And the beat in your heart and the moonlight shining down. So the idea of the beat in the heart, again, your heartbeat is something that is rhythmic. It just never stops. It keeps going. So like the singer wants the listener to potentially feel that they will never stop loving them. They will never stop thinking of the listener. Just like a heartbeat is relentless. It goes on and on and on, doesn't it? And then the moonlight, again, even at night time, the singer will be there watching over, which is lot, what a lot of you said. You use that preposition of being over the listener, um, just like the moon is in the night sky. And again, still forming some sort of light in the darkness. So even when they're in their worst, darkest days, there's still going to be that glimmer of light because that person is still going to be there. It's actually very moving. It's lovely. Oh, good. Let's see that idea of being comforted by someone. Lovely. Good. Some lovely responses. Well done, everybody. OK, so as I've said, metaphors are used primarily for description. They do have other functions, such as um, to make work more interesting or to give nouns a bit more power. But we can just focus on the description for now. So here we've got body parts that are being described using um, in metaphorical sentences, using metaphors, okay? So her spidery hand quickly wrapped around the boy's wrist. So it's describing her hand as a spider. So the comparison there is the spider and her hand. I'm just like, she's going to yeah, grab the boy's wrist. His leather-soled feet ignored the sharp metal shard on the beach. So that's implying that his feet, his feet have got such a thick layer on the bottom that he can step over anything on that beach and it's fine. 
doesn't even feel it. It's got leather soled feet. Um, also gives them the idea that they're rough and that they're wrinkled and that they're really tough. Um, and then we've got Dr. Roper's lips slithered into a smile. So almost like the lips are being compared to the movement of a snake there, okay? So can you come up with your own metaphor for a body part? Bit of a challenge for you. So I want you to think of the body parts. You might think legs, for example. And what can you describe the legs as? Right, I'm going to think legs are like cheetahs. So her cheetah legs ran fast, ran the fastest in the 100 meter sprint. Or maybe you can change the legs to something, an animal that's quite slow. And maybe she lost the race. So think about a body part, think about what you can compare it to, and then create a sentence with it. First five, let's see. I mean, 5CF, you need to step up here. 5BP on the last one extended their lead. No pressure. It's 11v9, two points in it. So we need essentially at least four, three to four 5CF members to come in first. I don't think Amy is going to have that. <laughs> Amy or Lexi at this rate. I mean, Lexi to be the keyboard warrior at home. So is Cole. Oh, sky metaphor, not simile. So instead of saying her neck was as long as a giraffe, it could have been her her giraffe neck was long or her giraffe neck allowed her to see uh, far into the distance. Yeah, does that make sense? So get rid of that as in future. Well done, Danielle. Good morning, Abu. Oh, nice. Oh, it's creeping me out a little bit there though, Abu. His long arms slivered and saved the goal, good. So his, I would change it there because you're almost making, um, it's not necessarily quite metaphorical, it's, it's a bit metaphorical, but I would change it a bit to his snaky arms slithered to save the goal. So you've got that clearer comparison of his arms being like that snake, lovely, well done. He brought a point in there, um, a booth for five VP, well done lovely. Amy, you've got a lovely sentence, but it's not comparing to anything. So you've got her silky hair shine brightly in the sun. They're just wonderful adjectives and they're beautiful, but not quite a comparison there yet, lovely. Oh, lovely, Karis. Her spider web hands wrapped around her blanket. That sounds like, because she's got web hands, that sounds like she's almost cl clutching it, not willing to let that blanket go. Nice, well done, second point there. Well, third point, actually. Good, her eagle eyes stared at me. And eagles are known, well done, John Paul, eagles are known to have superb vision that pierce through. So really, really well done with that. Second point for 5BP, so that's four points. Oh, good call. Her lightning fast reflexes blocked the punch from hitting her in the face. Fantastic. I've got like a matrix going on in my head there. So you've put that image in my head. Well done. That's exactly what you want to do as a writer to the reader. So super. Um, and you've compared her reflexes to 
lightning, which is really fast. So super, well done, perfect sentence. Yeah, I get it. I like that summer. The Grinch's heart is cold and empty. I like that because a heart can't be cold. We all know that it's pumping warm blood. We know it's warm. And it's not ever empty, is it? It's always, it's always having a flow of, again, blood in there. So good. You said two things that a heart can't be, but you've compared it to give the idea that the Grinch is emotionless and not very caring. Super. Well done. Right, so use that there, Danielle. Her nose can smell anything, but what are you comparing it to? So think of an animal that's got a really good sniffer nose on it. So it might be her dog-like nose could smell anything. Right, well done. Some really good examples there. But unfortunately for me, but fortunately for Miss Purcell, two members of 5CF came through, but still three members of 5BP extending their lead. Oh, I'll that. I'll that there for now. <laughs> okay, bringing it to 14 11. <sighs> three points in it, guys. We've got a few more tasks coming up. No pressure. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that brings us on to similes. So similes, I can see from what I saw coming through in the comments, we're going to, <laughs> yeah, we're going to, sorry, I just saw a comment there that made me giggle. We're going to cope with this one. So reminder, a simile is a way of describing something by comparing it using the words like or as. So if we've got a picture of a girl here, this reminds me of a student last year, Rahil, she was lovely. Her eyes are like stars. So they're thinking bright, twinkly, um, and her cheeks are like roses. So red and blushed. So it gives you that comparison there to two items. We've got another one. The car was as fast as a cheetah. Okay, so right, come on. Five points here, up for grabs again. Let's see. Create the opposite. So make the car slow. So we've made the car fast by saying the car was as fast as a cheetah. Make the car slow now. What could you compare it to to slow that car down? The car was as, mm, as a what? First five. No pressure. I need my, my dramatic music again. <laughs> right, first person came through. See, I mean, it, it was perfectly timed. Oh, I'm not going to say the sentence, but it's perfect. Right, 1.5 CF. Then Amy comes in and steals another point for 5 BP. Superstar Amy. Then Danielle comes in. But... You've not done the task. You've done a lovely simile, but it's not the task. Ah! <laughs> lovely, Lexi. Oh, oh my gosh, a bit. What you said is so fun. If you've seen, oh, what was that movie that I've watched? And it literally made me giggle. Have you seen it? It's um an animation. They go to a bank. Zootopia? Zo is, that, is that even a film? There's a film in there that has your animal, and it is hilarious. I might actually try to find a reading conference I can do with that little clip. Good, um, Aqua, woohoo! Great, Zach. Great, Callum W. Oh, this is fun. Well done, Karis. Jay! Well done, Clay. Jay gave you the same animal. Right, I'm going to start showing you. <laughs> God, you've just gone on a tangent there, but I love it. It's a lovely sentence. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, my gosh, so many comments. Well done, Terry B. 
much better there, Danny. Well done, John Paul. Well done, Isla. Well done, Kerry D. Well done, Maisie. And um, breathe, Miss Francois. Right. Some great sentences. So I had, the car is as slow as a snail, coming from a few of you. The car was as slow as a tortoise. Um, the car was as slow as a turtle. The car was as slow as a sloth. And that's the one in Zootopia where, oh, do you know, it probably isn't that movie, but it's something like that, where the guy goes to the bank and he's in such a hurry and the sloth is like, mm. and it takes forever and it's hilarious. It really cracks me up. If you get the chance to watch it, watch it and then tell me what you think. Um, yeah, we mainly had snail, sloth, turtle, tortoise. Brilliant. Oh, yay. Rihanna knows what I'm talking about. Virtual high five, Rihanna. She said it is called Zootopia. And she said it's absolutely hilarious as, as well. We've got two reviews there. Go watch it. Right, wonderful. Superstars. However, on one breath, so happy with all of those. On another breath, I've seen what's going on. 5VP, we've only got to extend it again. Can't deal. Three more points for 5VP, two more points for 5CF. Danielle, if you listened to the Tash, you would have got me that point. <laughs> One, two, three, and then one, two. So five BP have uh, 12. Oh, is my hand in the way? Sorry. <laughs> five CF have 13. Right, let's have a look. So similes. Um, how do we then change a simile to a metaphor? So remember, you've got to say that it is something. So I'm going to give you a little hint here. So say her eyes are like stars and say her cheeks are like roses, create the simile. But we can change it to a metaphor by just getting rid of the like. Her eyes are stars. Her cheeks are roses. So have a go at changing this. It's not the car was as fast as a cheetah. The car, what? Have a go. Can you change this here to a metaphor? First five. Good morning, Aaron. Aaron loved the movie as well. He said as well, he recommends the Zootopia. Do you remember that sloth scene as well? I think I'm going to have to watch it, you know. I think I cried the first time. I watched it with my mum. She cried as well. We were just laughing so much. Brilliant movie. I love animation. Right, first five. Similarly to metaphor. Oh, OME, check again. So, Zach, not quite either. We are changing this to a metaphor. So, we're not using like or as, we're changing it. Well done, Daddy Al. First point. See, I knew you had it in you, Daddy Al. Woo woo! So look back here, a few of us aren't getting this. Her eyes are like stars, changes to her eyes are stars. Her cheeks are like roses, her cheeks are roses. The car was as fast as a cheetah, the car, what? <laughs> Lexi, Lexi's got above and beyond. Hello, hello. That is. Yeah, good summer. Good John Paul. John Paul's gone down the easy route, easy road. Love it. Nice and simple, but effective. Good, Danielle. Oh, yeah, we finally changed the odds there. Good. Right, so this is what we were looking for. The car was a cheetah, or the car is a cheetah. Either one of those is fine, okay? But you have to say that it is something 
that it obviously isn't. So we had some really nice images that went above and beyond. Let me share with you um, when I find them. So the car is a fast lightning bolt, came from summer, well done. The car was a cheetah running in the Savannah Desert from Lexi, lovely. Good. And then a uh, jump all went down. Easy street there with the correct answer. The car was a cheetah, which is exactly what you see on my page there, jump all. So well done, I'm play. Right, next. So why do we even use similes? So if you look at this sentence, a simple sentence without much spark, it doesn't create much imagination for the reader. The dog was big and fierce. That would, I, I would say, be a lovely sentence if I saw it in a year two book. And you know what, in all fairness, sometimes there is a need for a simple sentence, even in a year five book, because if you've got a more complex sentence going on before or a more multi-core sentence, sometimes you need something a little bit simpler just to break up the reader. So it's not to say that it's not effective, but it could be better, couldn't it? So if we add some adjectives, which I know you know how to use, and add a simile, we can really transform the sentence into something much more powerful for the reader. For example, the black scruffy dog adjectives was as big as a wolf and fierce like a very angry bear. It compares now this dog, which is a known domestic animal, which is usually really friendly and really kind, to fierce animals that are more um, wild, such as wolf and a bear. Okay, so it's really transforming that image of a dog that we typically know to actually this is a dog I don't really want to mess with. Have a look at the house. So the house was beautiful. That's a fine sentence, but we can improve it by adding some adjectives and similes to the ancient house, which is the year five, six spelling word, was beautiful like an old fashioned painting. Okay, isn't that better? I think so too. So can you improve these sentences? Just pick one. So you're either going to do a sentence of the dog or of the singing lady or of the prince and princess. Where you see an asterisk, a little star, put in an adjective. Where you see an ellipsis, put in a simile. So the dog was what and what and ran like a what, put in the simile there. The lady, what lady, an adjective to describe her, had a voice like what. And the what prince asked the what princess to marry him. She was as happy as a what. So carefully look for these first. Bye. Ah. <laughs> Thanks, Danielle. Not too sure I like being compared to a dog. <laughs> Danielle's pet. The kind, cute dog is as kind as Miss Francois. That's lovely. Oh, what a lovely sentence, Summer. The beautiful lady had a voice like singing birds. I'm sure I inspired that one with my wonderful vocal abilities, isn't it, Summer? It's going to be tight to catch up. The vibes, yeah. Right, jump all. Oh, lovely. The beautiful lady had a voice of an angel, but had the voice of an angel is slightly metaphorical as opposed to simile. Can you just slightly change it to make it more simile like? You're so close, John Paul. Very lovely sentence, but you missed the adjective here. One more word, my lovely. Mm. 
I'm toying with your idea there, Abu, because I can see what you might be trying to say. I'm just wondering if it's the best simile to use. So if you don't mind, I'll discuss it. The kind lady had a voice like honey. Honey, yes, is it's a liquid or can be a solid, in all fairness. It can be smooth. So maybe you're trying to describe the voice as smooth. It can be sweet, or it is sweet. So maybe trying to say she has a sweet voice. But can you see, as a reader, I'm a bit confused with exactly the type of um, image you're trying to create for me, because I wouldn't compare a voice with honey. It's a good effort, though. I'm toying with that. I thought to talk to English specialists and think what everyone else says about it, because I can see how it could work. But I'm not sure it's the best example. Zach. You're trying to get lockdown points over there, Zach. The singer lady had a beautiful voice, like Miss Francois. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> Okay, good, yeah. The calm lady had a voice like Pe Katie Perry. Doesn't she sing raw? Does she sing raw? That's not calm, Danielle. <laughs> I don't know what else she sings. That's literally one the song I know of Katy Perry. So I, I'm sorry if I do not know the repertoire of her singles and albums. Good, Karis, the beautiful lady had a voice like an angel. Good, good, Chloe D. Lovely. Oh, gosh, I'm losing track, guys. We've got so many lovely ones coming through. But I don't, I've lost track of my uh, top five. I've got two down, and then I've lost track. I've got to get a lot down points. We've got two minutes. need to see who the winner was. <laughs> right. Good, Demi. Right. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. Right. I won't tell you results just yet. <laughs> right. Last task. We've only got a minute, so we've got to do this one quickly. So here I've got some similes and metaphors, and hopefully, fingers crossed, please, because you guys have actually done much better than I expected for this lesson. I came in really worried, thinking we're going to really struggle today. But I have here A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Two, four, six, eight. Eight boxes here. They are separated into four and four. Four of these letters are similes. Four of them are metaphors. Can you tell me which is which? First five. I'd like to show the answer. I hope you can see that. <laughs> oh, Sky, I love that sentence. The dog was hyper and hungry and ran like a cheetah to his food. What a glorious sentence, Sky. This is why I've missed you on these lessons. Look at what you can contribute. Brilliant. <laughs> That's a really interesting one there, Carl. The beautiful couple were like peanut butter and jelly. You wouldn't typically mix them, but they go so well together. Brilliant. Love that. Oh, nice, John Paul. Want to avoid that dog? The dog was fierce and aggressive, like an angry bull. Ooh. Oh, lovely, Aaron. The grey dog was fast and small and ran like a lightning bolt. Oh, lovely, Maisie. The beautiful lady had a voice like a choir of angels. Oh, that's so glorious. Zach. I don't like Katy Perry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. 
Oh, right, we've already got ours coming through. Gosh, we're ready. Okay. Good, Zach. Well done. Good, Danielle. Well done. Well, it's making a start. Well done, Summer. Well done, Lexi. One point to go. <laughs> well done, Amy. E. Oh, my goodness, guys. You've absolutely smashed today. Naughty Miss Francois. I, I doubted you, and I shouldn't have, because you've been amazing. Right. I have two sets of scores to put up. Let's see if it makes any difference. Right. So let me go for first showing you. So well done to so many of you that smashed this. A, C, D, and F were the similes because they contained words like and as, whereas metaphors were B, E, G, and H because everything was either it, it was or it is. So well done, superstars. So let's get the points up. So, in the last round, we had, I don't know if you can see this very clearly, but fingers crossed, we had five CF winning four points. And five BP bringing in a further one. And this round, we had five BP with a further two points. And five CF bringing in a further three. Right, what is it? It's a draw! <laughs> As if. That's hilarious. Well, I can deal with that. So. Twenty points each. Well, it was a tough competition and 5BP kept 5CF on the run the whole time, but you brought it back to draw. So we have 5BP winning one lesson. Then we've got a draw between the two. Who's going to bring it out in tomorrow's, or not tomorrow's, Thursday's lesson? Right, let's see what you've got. So, pupil voice. I just want to quickly talk you through something before I let you go. Um, pupil voice. On next week's lesson, we're going to be teaching what you want us to teach. Now, we have covered a lot of content. And if you go back to the virtual school, if I quickly show you, you will see in English, here, what we've covered, synonyms, antonyms, commas, expanded noun phrases, modal verbs, inverted commas, similes and metaphors, and then we're going to do personification. Can you send me messages on the comment section, just like you've been commenting this lesson, telling me what you want me to go back over? Because look, here is where, I don't know if you can see that, I'm going to zoom in. Here is where we're going to do the pupil voice next Tuesday. And then on Thursday, you've got an English quiz. And it's going to be the ultimate of ultimate challenges between 5BP and 5CF. So you've got to tell me what you want me to revisit here so that you are prepared for that quiz and you are prepared to know who the victors are for this English quiz for this term. Is it going to be 5BP or is it going to be the underdogs coming through 5CF? I mean, who knows? But you've got one lesson to skill up. So message me what you want me to do, okay? And then I will be handing you over very shortly to um, Miss Purcell at 11.15 for your math lesson. So please make sure you're all there. Then you've got your doodle tasks later today. It was lovely to see so many newbies. Thank you for coming along, and I will see you on Thursday. Remember to comment, what do you want me to teach next Tuesday? Up to you, okay? Bye, guys.